Miguel, you have a, a big fight coming up. Uh, you're going to be fighting Matt Brown, UFC, ESPN, um, and it's that's 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 a monster for you, man. To to see you uh, to see you get to this point coming up in March is uh, is is a big deal. How does that uh, how does that all kind of settle into your mind that you're getting these kinds of opportunities on the regular now? You know, uh, I'll be honest, and uh, I started here, you know, off in Broward and Dade County and fighting down here, and you know, I was actually having a discussion with my one of my coaches, uh, MMA Masters. And it came up like a year ago. We were just trying to get basically uh, to uh, one of the like main shows down here and trying to fight in front of Dana White and possibly get an opportunity to you know like get in the UFC. And now a year later, I'm fighting Matt Brown in Columbus, Ohio. Possibly going to be on the main card. It's a uh, Probably one of the biggest opportunities I've ever had. In so, his hometown, like yeah, you're gonna, you're we're gonna, in his backyard. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get that opportunity. So it's to... a huge step up. And uh, man, at first when I, they told me the news, I couldn't believe the name. You know, like uh, I went from fighting Hector Aldana, you know, someone around like uh, the same amount of fights as I do, right. to somebody who has 25 fights in the UFC. So it was like, oh, man, like is this is this the right Matt Brown? <laughs> you know, is, there, <laughs> is there another Matt Brown in the division? But it's awesome. Like, it's uh, the guy's a legend. You know, it's it's awesome to be com- compete with a guy like that, you know, and be in a cage with him. It kind of, it, it's like two, one or two things. The UFC either likes me or they hate me, you know what I mean? Like, they're giving me Matt Brown and, you know, I get the opportunity to kind of step in there with a legend and I belong there. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, Matt Brown, they, they think he's going to go in there and, you know, and uh, tear my head off, but we have other plans. So I think uh, I think that they probably think the world of you, man. I mean, Matt Brown uh, is a guy that everybody knows who is a UFC fan and, um, you know, I think they think a lot of you that they would want to put your skills up against a guy who's done that kind of thing, the crazy fights that he's had over his life. I mean, he's the he's the immortal, the, the, the hellbow, all those kinds of crazy things. So uh, to feel that your skill sets are already at that level, I think they probably think a lot of you. Yeah, you know, again, I got that news. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I just, uh, I kind of I, I looked at it. I showed it to my coach that was next to me. And he read it, and he kind of paused, like, wait, Matt Brown, Matt Brown? I'm like, do you know of another Matt Brown? <laughs> I mean, like, what's going on? And then when we got it, it was just, it was all excitement after that. You know, it was a, a big step up. What is what has it been like being in the UFC? Like, you have been a guy you fought in Titan XFN for the guys uh, for fight time down here. Like all these all these scenes, and I tell this to everybody down here. Uh, the South Florida is a fight community. I'm always amazed by seeing the talent we get to see um, in 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 these smaller venues and seeing the kind of talent that. Uh, we're churning out, but you know you've you've put in the work. You were you were putting on great performances in front of uh, smaller venues, and now you're going to be you're in this position where, you know, you're fighting you know a few feet in front of Dana White, and you're fighting basically in front of the world. Like, does that does that blow your mind? Have you been able to stay kind of within all of it because uh, it's it, if it's it's the same sport, but it's a big change in a big stage. Yeah, again, man, a year ago we were just trying to get like a look, just a look, you know, and. Now we're in this position. It's it's, and the whole journey up to this point was really uh, it was hard, man. Like it, there was a couple times where I didn't think I was gonna be able to do this much longer. Like uh, you know what? Like uh, you know people have dreams and sometimes they don't. You know it just doesn't pan out that way. Right. And for us to get this uh, to fight on the contender series, you know we were six, oh, what, six and zero. Oh, we got the opportunity, you know, and it was it was awesome. Like I was like, let's do it, you know. As a matter, like this is my shot. So let's What's go. What's that call like? It. What's that? What's that call like when you, you're going to go on the, uh, the the contender series? So it worked out uh, again. The guys at MMA Masters, man, they really looked out for me. So we, uh, they gave me the an idea, like, hey, you know, we can possibly get you in the contender series. And uh, when they first told me that, I didn't hold my breath. You know, uh, again, fighting down here and having so many fights kind of pull out. You know, getting used to like, I was six and zero, oh, and I didn't get any. I, I didn't have any any real traction, really. You know, right. nobody was knocking on my door to represent me. Uh, no, no, no uh, real contact with any big like uh, promotions or anything like that. So when they brought up the uh, just the, the 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 opportunity of Dana White's Contender Series, I was like, all right, let's do it. But again, I wasn't I wasn't gonna uh, put all my chips into that. You know, like I wasn't gonna go ahead and bet all, bet the house that I was gonna be on Dana White's Contender Series. So when uh, I got the actual call and they told me I'm gonna be on Dana White's Contender Series again, I kind of like froze. Like, nah, like it's real. Yeah, exactly. No, no way. Like, you sure? Me? You know, like, uh, like, you know, and they were like, yeah, man, you're on there. They gave me the name and everything, and then that was a whole other, like, journey we had to go through with the training camp and the, the, the opponent change and everything like that. And then to fight. You know, the crazy thing about the Dana White Contender Series, they warn me about it, but it's still a little different, a little eerie, is when you walk into the 
to the you know the cage and where everybody's sitting down, like your friends, your family, and then Dana White. It's super quiet. Right. It's super quiet. You walk in, you can hear everybody like just kind of almost breathing and just like, you know, you can feel the eyes on you and everything. And then, you know, when the fight goes on, there's no clapping. There's, you know, you can hear his coach telling him what to do. You can hear my coach and it's just, you know, just the thump. You can hear you can hear us like every, every kick, every pull. Yeah, it's just a, it's different from any other fight, you know. It's, it was almost like, yeah, being in the gym, yeah. which kind of helped me a little bit. You know, it was like mentally like, okay, it's – you know, it's just like, you know, sparring yeah, it at, yeah. at home, you know. But, again, Dana White's only a few feet away. But I tried to block that out. I was like, right. oh, let me, I, got, I, got, I, got a, I got a mission. I got to take this guy out first. Uh, Kevin, what, you, what have you seen in Miguel's uh, growth, I guess, over, over this, uh, this, this last short period of his career where the, this, the, the, the lights have gotten a little bit brighter and uh, more people are, are knowing his name? Is it, is it one of those things where are you trying to perfect – what got him there? Are you are you still trying to add things because now the competition is going to get a little bit stiffer and uh, you'll, you're taking on guys that do have a lot more experience? What does that go like as far as uh, preparation is concerned as a coach? I mean, I try to keep um, from my aspect the preparation pretty much the same as um, as it's always been. You know, it's just it's the name that's in front of us and the body type and the, the tools that they bring. Um, as far as you know, the progression that he's had since he started, it's. I always believed in him since, the, you know, I've been training for about five years. So I always believed he was UFC ready from, you know, the first time I actually mixed it up with him. He was he was that high level. He has a, a probably one of the best IQs I've ever seen um, that I've actually trained and had the opportunity to train. So uh, his progression has been great. I mean, Miguel gets mentally focused for whoever's being put in front of him. So, um, you know, it, it's been a, a, a fun ride for the last five years from his, you know, pro debut to where he's at now yeah it's it, it, speaking of your fight iq the way uh you won your last fight like taking the guy out like chopping those chopping those legs down that is such a a nasty thing when watching a fight you see a guy's leg balloon up when do you do that like in a fight knowing that that is there for you uh knowing that a guy really can't stop that and knowing it's starting to really affect him like how does what when does all this kind of stuff kind of engage in your head that something is being that effective when you're winning a fight that way there were a few like little moments, you know, when uh, there, I don't I can't remember which kick it was, but when I did hit him, did a little stutter step, you know, like you could tell like he uh, he wasn't pressing uh, forward like we expected him to. Hector Aldana was, you know, a, a, he's a pressure fighter, more of a Muay Thai guy, and we expected him to be real heavy, like come out real strong and put the pressure on me. And uh, we got a few kicks off, and then he started hitting a stutter step, and all of a sudden that that initial explosive step forward wasn't there anymore. And then I just kind of kept throwing it, kind of trying to feel him out to see maybe he was trying to kind of lure me into to an exchange. And he did do it a few times. He kind of waved me over, you know, come into him. I was like, no, we're not going to play that game. So, you know, after the first round went by, I went I went back to my corner and told me, yeah, he's feeling the leg kicks. You got to keep going back to that. And I was like, man, let's do it. You know, like that's the that's the easiest way to, to take this guy out, you know. So he got in there and I started to uh, – Kind of put it together a little more. Now use my hands to set up the kick a little bit more, and then use the kick to set up my hands a little bit more. So then everything kind of just came together, and and boom, that last uh, that last kick. I think it was like the fifteenth kick I landed or something like that that uh, put him away. It was very very impressive. So getting ready for a guy like Matt Brown, uh, who as we've said has has a, has a ton of experience. Um, do you think like in the prep for this, do you think for both of you guys, like, do you think this is going to be a lot about focusing on you, your skill sets, or do you, do you go and dive into an archive that big? Do you go on the recent fights with a guy like Matt Brown? How do you guys feel like you're going to kind of, uh, unravel that Rubik's cube? You want to tackle this one or, I mean, you know, for me, I look at, you know, I definitely watch a little bit of tape. I, I try to see tendencies and, and habits that he has, things that he likes to do and, and go off of. Um, I, I look into what I, how I would beat Miguel with Matt Brown's uh, tool set. Um, so, you know, we, we have a couple of little ideas we like to go off of, and, and we focus mainly on what Miguel is going to do rather than so much of what he's going to do because I feel personally as a trainer, if, if you get too caught up in what that guy's going to do, you've already lost the first battle there. So I, I want Miguel to kind of focus on what he's going to do and what we're preparing him to do and just doing it over and over in the gym so it becomes just – a second nature you know that's like I said the IQ that that this kid has is just I've never seen anything like that the way he could you just saw he remembered how many kicks he yeah. landed you know it's it, that's something that's super special in a fighter Miguel, uh with yourself now at eight and oh uh just just kind of jumping into the UFC what what for yourself like in an ideal world like timeline wise do you feel yourself um 
I guess getting into contendership. Like, do you do you have that stuff all mapped on your uh, in your mind? Because getting to the UFC is such a grind in itself. Yeah. Uh, now it kind of feels like you're almost uh, starting from square one again because you have new eyes to impress, almost the whole world to to to, to get to know your name. So, um, do you do you think of yourself in regards to like? you know, in two years I want to be fighting for the title or I want to be top five and all that stuff. And, and do you visualize yourself with guys uh, amongst the top of the division and welterweight, which is a, which is one of the, the beasts of, of the, uh, of the, of the company? Yeah. I'm in a real, uh, real heavy, like a really heavy, like talent, heavy weight class. Yeah. And, uh, when it comes to like the, my future, to be honest, I really kind of look at each fight as they come. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I want to be, it'll be the next guy in front of me. And I was talking to Kevin about this recently. You know, I never, like, being in the situation that I am in now, it's always something that like, you strive for. You know, you try to, um, you want to be in the UFC. You want to fight the best and everything like that. But now that I'm here and then, you know, doing stuff like this, like being on the ticket, you know, like you never really think about it until you're until you're there. You know, you always think, I, my mindset was always the next fight. You know, like, who who's in front of me and who, I, who do I got to beat, you know? So do I have a timeline and... Like, when do I want to be, like, a top 10 guy or top 20 guy? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I have a timeline. I just want to make sure that uh, when I have my next fight, I'm ready to go and I beat that guy, and then after that I beat that guy. And I know this is a major step up, so it'll get me to where I want to be a lot sooner. So I'm thinking maybe two years, maybe a year and a half if, you know, again, we do it right and I get, you know, the right fights. Like, you know, when I mean right fights, I don't, I don't mean, like, there's a person in particular because I – my mindset also is I'm in the UFC, so I'm gonna fight the best guys in the world. So you can give me whoever you want, you know. Like you've, that's it. You've pummeled a lot of guys. Like you, you go out and you get some some pretty vicious finishes. Um, do, it, going into a fight like this against Matt Brown and knowing this, you know, gonna be on ESPN and all that stuff. Uh, you have a guy. You were on the Contender Series. I know that you won by decision. That, but that is a fight where they want you to go all action, go out and impress. Um, do you feel an extra set of pressure? To, to, to do that and to, to impress upon people what kind of a fighter you are and that you are a guy that keep, people want to continue, or do you feel like all that stuff's going to come if you execute your stuff correctly? That's exactly that. Yeah, I feel like as, as long as we stay focused and stay disciplined, we can beat anybody, you know? So if it's Matt Brown, if it's, you know, any other Walter Wayne division, I know if we do the if we, we game plan correctly, which we always do, you know, I stay disciplined to what we do. That's, uh, that's on me at that point, you know, when I go in there. All the work that we put in, me and Kev, the guys at Masters, Caesar, my guy at uh, round five, all my, you know, all those, all my training partners, everybody, we stick to what we do, and I go in there and I execute. It's gonna be, we're gonna get a finish. Like it's, I, I don't doubt it. And if it's not that, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dominate each, each minute of the fight. So, how do you, uh, how do you see it going, Kevin? On this, uh, this matchup in particular. I know you as a, as a guy who breaks things down. You've probably already thought about it a hundred different ways. I mean, I've seen some things that I like that that we're gonna try to exploit. Um, I think that we're gonna stop him in the second round. You know, I think I think we're going to touch him up in the first round. You know, I know he likes – I don't want to give up too much, but I know he likes to come forward. And he has, you know, very calculated and smart pressure. He's not a guy that, that runs right at you. But um, I think that we're going to touch him up with some shots. Um, we're going to be in his face as well, you know. And just like Miguel said, we're – everything we're going to do is, is calculated. You know, we're not going to fold under pressure. And then I think by the second round, we're going to put him away. Um, Miguel, before we get you out of here, man, uh, the you know any kind of last words that you just want to say, uh, I guess, to the community because it is really cool that we have somebody, uh, you know, growing up down here who was who was fought down here and now is getting this kind of national landscape. Um, you know, this is uh, something I tell people all the time is that there's just such tremendous talent down here, uh, and you're you're definitely a picture example of that. Of, uh, of 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 the kind of growing crop we have down here in South Florida, so I guess is it uh, does, you know the the meaning it has to you to to be you know from down here and now getting this kind of national showcase for people. Well, you know, if I had a message to all the guys out there that are fighting like from down here, I, I mean, and you're right, there, there's so much talent down here. It's like I'm surprised the UFC doesn't come down here more. Yeah, you know, like uh, I think the, what's the last show? It was a Bank, Bank uh, it was a BB&T, Bank Atlantic. It was yeah, BB&T, BBT Center, Center last year, which was yeah. like after we were blacklisted for like a good five years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what? That was like the first time in six years. Yeah, which is crazy to me because again, there's so many great fighters down here, so many jujitsu practitioners. Like you can you can throw a rock and hit a black belt. You know what I mean? Like there's so many good guys down here, and for all those guys that are fighting coming up through the regional circuit down here. And keep it going. Like uh, I'm exactly like you said. I'm an example. I made it to where I want to be, and everything's changed since that point. And I, I remember the days where I was. I like I don't know if I can continue this. So I like 
it's hard, man. Like trying to trying to chase your dream is hard, but you know, when, once you make it, it's all those all sacrifices are worth it, man. So to everybody out there who's struggling to make it, keep fighting, man. Uh, he's Miguel Baez. He is going to be fighting March 28th on ESPN against Matt Brown. His trainer, Kevin Gleason, also kind enough to join us. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys spending some time with us this morning Thank getting you. up appreciate with us. It. And uh, we'll definitely be the watching ticket. the journey for sure. The ticket. We're back. Tune after- in. There you go. <laughs>